if you look at this example, here we have p to the power of 3 minus 2pq squared plus p squared q minus 2q q cubed, q to the power of 3. Okay, uh, here we have four terms, and uh, the greatest common factor among all these is 1. So we go with factor uh, by grouping. So I'll start with grouping the first two terms and the last two terms. Let's see if that's the right grouping. Again, uh, this is not always going to be a right grouping sometimes. Sometimes we may have to group this differently. I might, I might have to group the first term and the last term or first term and the third term. So three different ways we can group these. But usually the first two terms and last two terms, most problems would work. In this case, uh, when I do that, I see I have p in common. The greatest common factor among the first two terms is p. If I factor the p out here, what times she give me p cubed is p squared. What times she give me 2pq squared? I'm missing 2q squared. I uh, place them here. And when I factor the q out of the next two terms, the next group, you notice that you get the exact same terms here. So it means we, we came up with the right grouping. Here I have p squared minus 2q squared. Here I have p squared minus 2q squared. If I didn't get the same expression, then we want to look into factoring this differently. Maybe I have to group them this way and this way. Or I might have to group the first term and the last term and two middle term. And that's how you would be able to find out what would be the right way uh, to group these. OK, I lost my page for a moment. So let's go back to the same example again quickly. Here, factor by grouping. We talked about that. If you look at the, if you group the first two and the last two and uh, factor a P and Q out of the first two and the last two groups, you notice that you would have P squared minus 2Q squared, P squared minus 2Q squared in common. So if I factor that out, this is the greatest common factor, P squared minus 2Q squared. You would say, what times the greatest common factor give me this first term? It's missing, uh, I'm missing a P squared, I'm missing P, I'm sorry, P. And then what times greatest common factor give me the second term? Here we're missing Q. And that's how you can factor that. So this is factor by grouping. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have four terms. But if you were going to group the first two and the last two, it's not going to give you a right grouping. Even if you pick the first term and the third term, or first term and the last term, you quickly find out these, none of these are the right grouping. However, we talked about this problem last, last time. If you look carefully, one term here is perfectly squared. This is perfectly squared, which is y squared. And the sign right in front of that is minus. So if the first three terms would be a perfect square, then I'm looking at the difference of a square. In this case, if you look this carefully up, 9x squared plus 24x plus 16. Even if you didn't recognize this is perfect square, you can always factor this and see if that would be a perfect square using the trial and error method. So I'm going to look at 9x squared plus 24x plus 16 and try to factor this. I'm going to open two parentheses here. Well, for x squared, obviously, it would be x and x. If this is a perfect square, then this must be 3x and 3x then. And if this is perfect square, the 16 would be 4 and 4. So if I put 4 and 4 here. And I can quickly verify that this would be 12x. And here would be 12x. Sure enough, that gives me 24. That's exactly what I want if both are these are positive. So this is perfect square. This is 3x plus 4 squared. So you can just sit down and see if you can factor these three terms and get it into perfect square. And it is. 
So you notice that the first three terms result into a perfect square, and the last term was already perfect square, so now we have a difference of square. Remember when you have a difference of square, you have a squared minus b squared, that's the same as a minus b times a plus b. The only difference here is your a, or first term, is this expression here. Your a is 3x plus 4. This is your a, really. And your b is just y. So this would be a plus b times a minus b. That's exactly what we have here. a minus b times a plus b. You can write it in order you want. And then, once we get it to this form, we can go ahead and combine like terms. So we can remove the parentheses, and this is how you factor them. So you can use this method if you can recognize that any of these four terms, three of them, would result into a perfect square after you factor them, and the other term has to be already a perfect square and the sign right before that has to be minus. So you want to make a difference of square out of that. So all these are all the sign to see if this is the kind of uh, factoring that you're looking at. Let's take a look at another example here. You have 64a cubed plus 16a squared plus b cubed minus b squared. So can we uh, factor anything in common among all these? The greatest common factor among all these is simply 1, right? You don't have the greatest common factor but 1 here. So we can proceed with the next step. Uh, so this most likely is factored by grouping. If I group the first two terms, I, I recognize the first two terms is the sum of cubed. And the next two term is a difference of square. So I can, I can factor them that way. This would be a sum of cubed. You need to know the formula. Let me remember the formula. A cubed plus B cubed. That would be A plus B. And then A squared. That would be minus AB plus B squared. You really need to memorize this. So in this case, your first term is 4 a, so you have 64a cubed. I can recognize this is a cubed of numbers. So my a, or the first term, is 4a. So 4a goes here. So this becomes 4a squared. And 4a also goes here. Just simply substituting those first term and second term into this formula. My second term here is b. So everything else stays the same b. So as you see here, we have 4a plus b. And then you have 4a squared. That becomes 16a squared. And the middle term would be minus first term times the second term, which would be 4a squared, 4a, 4a times b. The first term is 4a. The second term is b. It would be 4a times b. And the last term would be b squared. Everything is here. Plus, but this is a difference of a square. So it would be 4a minus b, 4a minus b right there. Again, this is a difference of a square because 16a squared is 4a. The first term is 4a. The second term is b. So that's all I have to do is just uh, remove the brackets, combine like terms. So we take a look at these two terms now. What do we have in common among these two terms? Anybody can see what we have in common among those two terms? Let me use a different color. I'm going to box this first. So we're looking at this term here. So the sign in between is plus, right? That, that's what it, that sign here separate these two terms. If you look at carefully here, you have 4a plus b in common among these two terms. That's what we have to factor that out. So you, you would ask yourself, what times this greatest common factor give me this first term? This is my first term. All these would be what we need.
which is 4a squared minus 4ab plus b squared that results into 16a squared minus 4ab plus b squared. Now what times the greatest common factor give me the second term, this is my second term, that would be what's missing here, which is 4a minus b. So we are using factor by grouping, we're putting all those the formulas that we learned, most of them uh, that we learned uh, together here. This would be factored by grouping. This was difference of square here and here. Here we have sum of cubed. So we had to use all these formulas that we learned for this, for this problem here. Use the difference of square, sum of cubed, and factor by grouping.